you are on. So, hello and good evening. My name is Paul Ratcliffe. I am the CEO and co-founder of Virtus Proctor. Um, for those of you that have just seen my face, you'll thank me for putting this current screen up. And what I'm really interested in doing, and before I get into business forensic science, I just want to say, uh, Jeff, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, clearly, mass technology networking events are extremely successful, and um, already we've had some good information, so thank you on that. But right now, it's, it, it's always a pleasure for me to be talking anything to do with business forensic science, um, but introducing it um, to intrigued people is certainly the best one that I can present. Um, the challenge that I have is I have 30, uh, sorry, 40 minutes to deliver to you um, what has taken um, 30 years of information. So obviously it's impossible for me to deliver a meaningful introduction um, in that time of everything. Um, so it's my job, therefore, you know, my single goal is for you to understand a little bit about business forensic science and for it to ignite the sparks of curiosity that I feel that it will. Um, you know, when I was told 40 minutes, I did respond a little bit with, it's like introducing a world famous climber, but telling him or her, all you can do is say, uh, I climb hills in cold weather. It's not quite as, as expansive as it should be. Um, and my daughter mentioned it's like saying to Cristiano Ronaldo, who's a soccer player, for those that you who don't know, what do you do? And he just says, I kick a leather ball into an eight feet high by 24 foot opening. Doesn't sound again as much as it is but let me move on and create some of those sparks <clears throat> this was us two minutes ago when i called and said we're on in two um this is a little quick look at some of my team and with regards to some of the individuals on there the person receiving my call call is the individual on the bottom left and his name which is um, slightly covered by the message is CPR. Why is he called CPR? Because he resurrects things like I've never seen anybody do. Um, you know, on the right, we have Jordi, who seems to be, and he's silky smooth. Um, and, and Jordi seems to be appealing to your good natures um, by providing you some hot chips. And I, they are officially chips and not fries. Um, and just before I move on, the top right hand corner, which is indicating with Grace, she is not bringing any flowers. Um, what she's actually doing is prior to this actual presentation, we had an earlier one, and all she's doing is merely picking up the flowers that we were adorned during that presentation. So the pressure's on guys to enjoy it. This is a very high level look. Deoxyribonucleic acid and ribonucleic acid. And I've given you the, um, a little bit of help there for the pronunciations of each of these. Deoxyribonucleic acid is actually DNA. Did someone hey, have a question? I have a blank screen, just white. Does everyone see that or is it just me? It's a blank screen. It's a white screen now, Paul. <laughs> oh, certainly yeah, isn't. There we go. There it is. Oh, OK. Thank you for letting me know. So deoxyribonucleic acid, and more commonly known as DNA. And what we're doing here, and I'm certainly not expecting you to capture this detail, retain it, what I'm putting up here is to show you some of the background that we have 
And when we start looking at things like DNA structures or molecular strands, um, some of this will start to become more obvious. And what I would say is, this is not some form of science lesson. This is not some whiz-bang accounting practice. This is something that most of you will not have seen. And it is something that by the end of this slide and the next slide, so within the, you know, the encompassing three or four minutes that we have on the next two slides, you will start getting light bulbs flickering. I will begin to see and feel the fact that you're beginning to recognize what business forensic science can do for you. So on the left-hand side, you've got a, what's called a double helix structure, which you may have seen in DNA and you've probably seen on movies like Jurassic Park, etc., that shows the actual structures. On the right-hand side, we have a single strand ribo uh, sorry, ribonucleic acid. And just underneath, and as I say, I don't want to get too in-depth with this. It's going to come very clear in a moment. But I do want to give special mention underneath the DNA structure, you see something called polymerase. And what polymerase enables is basically the, it, it's critical in DNA replication. That will become very clear momentarily. So all of the aspects down to um, the forensic le level of molecules, and please tell me, does everybody see this current slide of forensic science business fusion? Blank again. Well, maybe I'm just teasing you then. Still the DNA screen now. I see it, Paul. You see this? Okay. Does everybody? I see the DNA screen that you were on before. Deoxyribonucleic acid. <laughs> yeah, DNA. Yes. <laughs> but, but you're telling me, Rob, uh, Bob, that you can actually see the current forensic science business fusion slide. I'm going to have to take that back. The uh, long word that Jeffrey just uh, announced is the same screen I see. There you go. It, there you it go. Now we're there. Wow. Delay. That was just, it, it was actually um, just building up for this. So does everyone see the slide, the new slide now? Yeah. Yes, we do. Wonderful. Thank you. So. This, to be honest, is the eureka moment. Everything that you saw on the previous slide was scientific, as you know. Everything that we have now done has got to a situation where we have fused forensic science with business. So at the forensic level, we are now able to have blueprints, modeling, reproduction, um, replication, as in cloning. Um, we enabled our, and all of this will be explained, free shot and free snap exploration and discovery is critical. But we've taken this now, and it's now, it will become a little bit more legible and understandable, rather than it all being DNA structures, etc you're now looking at things that you're more accustomed to when we're looking at things like revenue, margin, cost. So when we look at a specific area, and let's look at the top left and we'll take income as the first area, what I'm saying now is we have the ability to literally take a snapshot wander around that snapshot as though you're in a, a matrix movie, you've just frozen everything, but you have the ability to walk in there, lift it up, turn it around, almost like a CAD design. 
We do that for every single touch point and element within a business construct. So we specialize in two areas. That's cost forensics and that's contractual obligations. Our services could actually be relevant to any, but it becomes a gargantuan task. So we have um, basically focused and concentrated on those areas and it's a vast area that it covers. But we're now in a situation where if there is a dependency, if there is um, a risk, if there is innovation, um, we can get every component so that it is maximized and that it is optimized. Now, if you think of your business in every single line item, touch point, things that are um, cross-sectional from the other departments, every single item we can pinpoint and have the accuracy to be able to demonstrate things that are showing um, stability, progress, things you would want to clone, things you absolutely wouldn't, things that are causing the business issues, we're now able to provide a solution based on all of that information you currently have within your business. So it's, that's very easy to understand on things like um, cost itself. So anything that touches that business from a cost or an expenditure perspective can now um, be literally optimized. This is millions of elements that we're talking, hence the reason why we only concentrate on two areas. But we, we, you know, we're looking at the structure of the business, we're looking at elements that are very important, like culture, like diversity. All of these things make up a view of the, the inside of the business. They provide you with, and they provide, if you want, the shadows to now have a voice. Typically, this is worked with with a champion within our client um, because they usually retain this information and the results, which are significant, and we'll look at that, um, are often relayed and um, cascaded um, with tactical reasons or strategy by the actual owner. Meaning if there is a difficult time within the business, it's wonderful to show great improvement. If they've been talking about layoffs, if they've been talking about they haven't got enough in the budget, if they've been talking about what are we going to do with this supposed new normal that we're in after the pandemic. Um, it isn't a new normal. It is the normal. You know, we have got to adapt, show agility, and all of that um, is enabled with forensic science as it is now fused with business. So, and a lot of this is going to start moving its own momentum. So, hopefully, you have seen a change of the slide, or are we still having issues? Looks like you got a bit of a delay, white screen. Okay, well, hopefully by the end of the delay, the slide will come up and it will show you an example of challenges. Um, and this particular example is a challenge of increasing revenue, um, which most people have heard of. Um, as much as we love this, we do, you know, we do everything to make a profit. That is also a challenge and shared by many. But what we want to do is if your challenge is more revenue, you need to increase your profit. You in need to increase operating margin or gross margin. Um, and you've got to do this over a month to month basis. Um, any issues that keep an individual Paul, can you hear me? Yep. Can anyone hear me? 
Yes, I hear you. I can't hear Paul though. <laughs> Braced with an update on the stack. Is. Hey, Paul, uh, you still have a white screen. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Wait, no, we're back Got to the back. forensic business fusion stuff. Paul, I was also going to suggest if you turn off your video, you it might work better. There we go. There you go. That's better. Yeah, if you want to show your video up, Paul, that's, that's a great point. It takes, uh, helps with your bandwidth. Um, okay, but you're, you're now with it? Yep. yep, we see the challenge. Yep, when the challenge so, changes. Just as I'm about to change it, it comes up. So this is just, giving, as I say, giving you clarity, giving you some examples that a lot of businesses and a lot of leaders, irrespective of where they are within the organization, um, leaders doesn't necessarily have to mean executives. Um, when we start looking at those, we are addressing some of these items. And I have actually changed again, and the video is not running, so hopefully you're going to see this. Still white, Paul. Still white. You want to try stopping your camera there, the video? Absolutely. There you go. It just came up. Mm -hmm. As I suspected, Paul, I didn't want to look at your face. No, I know. So where am I stopping this? What, what is it you're asking me should, to stop? should be on the bottom left corner of your Zoom screen. You have a start or stop video, start video. Let's see if you start it to say stop. Just say stop video, bottom left corner. Yeah, if it's bottom left, it should say stop video next to the mute button. Got it. Has Paul gone mute to other folks? I am not on mute if you can hear me. Okay. Now we, we can. can now, but we couldn't before. Oh, my Lord. Um, but we can <laughs> see your screen. I know. I'm scared of pressing anything in case you can't. <laughs> you want to share, just share your screen. There you go. There you go. Yep. So you can see Utopia? Yep. Yeah. Well, I do apologize for the technical issues. I will. Um, can I have a time check, Jeff? Oh, yeah, you got plenty of time. It's only 636, so you got till 715. Wonderful. So, after the challenges, we obviously start looking at solutions. And, you know, when you start getting solutions that are increases of revenue, let's give you an example. A company approaches us, gives us the challenge. 16 weeks later, the results are $467,000 of additional previously unrecognized, unqualified revenue at margins that are superior to what their prior margins were. And that four hundred and sixty-seven thousand um, dollars was monthly for a total of twelve point six million. So twelve point six million dollars that my client did not know prior to having the services of business forensic science over sixteen weeks. Those sort of things get attention. And I, and I just give you that example um, to show you that this is not 
hey, we brought this guy in and he told us to, here's a good example, stop printing in color, do it in black and white because it will save you blah, blah. That is not our, uh, not that we wouldn't raise that, but that's not what you're bringing us in for. You are bringing us in to have a look at what and how business forensic science can deliver to your specific requirements. And that's the big thing. Every single time that we perform our services, it is specific to your case. So Paul, so, so Paul yes. when you're looking at that, obviously the organization you dealt with there was a large organization and you know, big claps around the table because that's a, that's a great saving. I think a lot of guys here are saying to, my, to themselves, hey, we're not that large of an organization. How does that translate to us from a savings perspective versus a Fortune 1000 kind of company? Okay, good question. So w with regards to um, sizes of an organization, you're going to get a little bit of a clearer picture in, in a couple of slides. Look, it's more relative to... Um, it's the amount, I'm going to say it's more Hey, Paul, you cut out on us the last 15 seconds or so. I'm not sure if you can hear us, but you cut out on us. $100 million. Hey, hey, Paul, you cut out the last 10 or 15 seconds. So we asked the question and you were talking about the relevance of size of organizations and then we missed what you said. So the relevance is more to, um, for us to make it meaningful, we're not looking for clients where we can say, we saved you um, $6,324 over the next 12 months. Um, it, it, it's not flattering for our client and it's not great for the amount uh, that we are going to earn from conducting such a thing. So if you have a stabilizer or a general line, if a client is 100 million revenue upwards and they fall in the certain categories that you will see momentarily, we should be talking. Um, if someone is a, a $5 million business, um, I would say business forensics immediately is not something that they want to be looking um, of a quick turnaround, but they should look at perhaps a briefing session with us, um, which we, we would do as a courtesy. So 30 minute session would go over that or um, they need to be in touch um, with ourselves, looking at a consultation, um, and we can weigh up, we being the client and ourselves, um, how much ROI there is on that. Because our typical ROI, Bob, um, we're talking thousands in the percentiles. So for a, for a basic guideline, I would say $100 million dollars. If, the, if something is smaller than that, um, it would have to be looked at in more detail for me to give you an immediate answer of whether it will work and be beneficial to that organization or not. Does that answer your question, Robert? It does, Paul, thank you very much. And I, I, do, but, I do like the fact that you have a half hour kind of, uh, hey guys, let's doggy ducky horse this and see if we can have a little bit of a solution and we can might be able to help you out just from a just from an advisory standpoint. Right, and, 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 and because it's so specific, Bob, that's why we do that. Um, if someone can give me a call and, you know, or someone that's on this call now says, hey, you know, we're a $175 million organization. We have a, a team of account managers and sales, and I can stop you there and say, we should be talking. So the 30 minute briefing is literally to make it specific. And by the end of that 30 minutes, you, you have enough or the listener has now enough information to determine whether or not, hey, we need to know more about this or not for us. 
one of our core strengths is on the screen now and it's stealth it's privacy it's security and it's confidentiality um i won't do it on this call it is a massive differentiator it is something our clients adore i don't know if lots of them are full of ego and don't want to share the fact that they've had someone in to help here and they just want us to be the you know, the ninja in the shadows bringing in these results, and that is absolutely fine by us. The only issue we have with all this is it makes marketing um, the hardest problem in the world. Um, you want to shout from the rooftops, um, but with discipline, we understand that the stealth and the security confidentiality that we offer is something that clients um, adore. So, did we have a change of slide? Yes, we did, but you sound like you went mute again, Paul. <laughs> Earth to Paul. <laughs> have I lost your sound as well, guys? I think when you switch the slide, you might lose us for five or 10 seconds. A bandwidth okay. competition. But we're good. We're good now. Yeah. Okay. So, well, I, Rob, I got a quick question. So, the hundred million I got that in revenue. What size? I'm at a bank, so it's a little the revenue. This doesn't translate quite the same way. We're an asset size. Um, what size banks? And have you worked with banks? Um, um, yes, um, financial is one of the areas, and um, you're right. It is different for a bank. It's more things like how, what's the expenditure that the bank makes to run their security, to um, have anything that they use operationally, like a data center, for example, how much money is being spent on there? What new technologies is the bank looking at? Does everything have to be cloud as a service with you? who's providing that for you. Um, and while I mentioned that, we are also not a business that's coming in to go, oh, don't pay Johnny 500. We've got Michael over here that can do it for 300. Um, we are relationship driven. We are not going in to impact anyone's business relationship, any communication with an end user or a client or a, a, a partner all goes through and vetted by the champion of our clients. There is nothing that goes on without our client knowing it. And our goal is to make your client our next client. Um, and by doing that as disciplined and methodical as we do, they see the results and they instantly see what benefits they could have on their side. So we run two services as I said, areas of expertise are science cost forensics and forensic contractual obligations. Um, and then we go into some areas there of our mastery. The bottom line is optimization of each and every touch point within that business. So when we look at science cost forensics, and I'm just thinking you probably lost my speech because I clicked no, you're, you're with us now, Paul. Beautiful. So science cost forensics. What is it? So a few questions that you look for. Um, are you an outsource provider or a recipient of outsourcing? Are you a city or a municipality, local government, federal government? Or... Do you utilize client account management within your business? Everyone has contracts. Um, everyone typically needs to make sales. Um, so that's a very large capture point. If you fall with any of those, we need to talk. With regards to industries, so, Paul, let me stop you just for a sec, because I think everybody has a good sense for outsourcing. Um, just just kind of give us the doggy, ducky, horky, horsey, what you look at 
when you look at an outsourcing contract? What kinds of things are you looking for that might be able to save organizations money? Okay, so um, Bob has just asked me, um, hey, Colonel Sanders, can you tell me exactly the recipe of KFC? So, and I've said this to Robert a lot. Um, I will show you the menu, but the recipe is not. So, and I just want to clarify or confirm that, Bob, that's what you were talking about. That was it. I'm, I'm going to keep asking the question. I hope you uh, respect my tenacity. Um, that's one word for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, what we are looking for with outsourcing um, is basically, again, think monetary or impact to an organization. If they are outsourcing, generally, they are looking at things like feet on the street. They're looking at a PMO office, perhaps, for their technology, their data center, their call center, their help desk, um, the cloud offerings, um, people. Um, with regards to outsourcing, and that's why I put it on there, if you are outsourcing, or if you are an outsource provider, um, we should be talking and that's why you would have the 30 minute specific to you briefing session and that would be very clear then because obviously we would be in preparation for our next briefing is specifically with an it um a tech outsourcing company whether it's network or not um does that help any bob i still didn't give you your full answer but it's basically anything relating to IT, uh, it doesn't even have to be IT, um, outsourcing in general, whether it's logistics, manufacturing, whatever it is that you are looking at, we should be talking. And if you're in within the areas of a technology, manufacturing, retail, government, um, we definitely should be talking. If there are additional ones on there, so we mentioned earlier, um, financial, um, which is certainly um, an addition that we have uh, catered for on a regular basis. So, what is at stake? To be honest, what is at stake is we are a consulting specialist with a bit of a difference. We say, why would you pay ABC company a thousand, you know, and I've seen them very high, a million dollar retainer because we've got a reputation that we really know our stuff. Um, I believe in paying for proof um, rather than promises, and promises can be cheap and they can be well informed, well desired, but it doesn't mean it's going to work. So, we give options to our client in our payment structure of our fees. What is at stake is nothing. You know, if, if I suddenly give you a thousand dollars out of my wallet and say, hey, would you give me um, ten dollars back for giving you that thousand? I think most of you would say, sure. And that's the basic principle. We have a, a pricing structure that enables our client to have flexibility. Do they want to pay as a fixed fee over the period of time? We would provide you what the results um, will look like and what our targets are so that you'll be able to make a calculated, do we want to pay these guys X amount as a fixed fee? Or do we want what's called the hybrid offering where we pay a much lower fixed fee and then a percentage of the benefits that they provide. If they come back with $5,000, they're only going to get the X percent, which is prior agreed to. Or do you go for a complete paper performance? You obviously pay a, um, an elevated percentage, but you're literally paying it out of the benefits that have been provided to you. We then look at you know the knowledge and expertise. We've got over 30 years into this, and 
for those of you old enough to remember things like um, movies like Brubaker, um, which really shows my age, we did that for 21 years. 21 years of putting us in an embedded situation purely for research, development, experience, etc. Um, this is not something we've played with. It's a plan that was developed over 30 years ago. Um, I had a lot of dealings at the time with um, um, Asia Pac, and I fell in love with things like the Japanese culture. And when they have a business plan, it can be and typically a 25 year business plan, not a one, not a short term, medium, five year. And they start with a 21 year. We have worked meticulously to get where we are. The next one shows you old fashioned brain power. Um, this is, you know, we are, we are bad at what we are bad at, but we are extremely good at what we're good at. And then the far right, you've got hitting the ground running. This is something that we can start um, with very little ramp up time. It doesn't take long from a meeting taking place to an exploration discovery, a provision of a proposal of what we would do and what you can be anticipating as a result. And then we start conducting our, our services. So, hey, Paul, just on that, I and here again, I, I mentioned at the beginning of the call that I've been working with Paul for the last couple of months. And uh, in terms of putting your money where your mouth is, you know, Paul just kind of outlined the services where I, I look at uh, just kind of linked in with a few guys on the phone right now in terms of the titles and responsibilities that you guys have. Uh, this, this put your money where your mouth is. And, and no cost, uh, it really is a, hey, what do you have to lose kind of opportunity? So while I really do, I, I realize that you have enough, you have confidence in your service offering, we can say, hey, make me prove it. And I think it's kind of a, a unique model uh, that, that truly is how Paul goes to market. Yeah, th thank you, Bob. It, we have old fashioned things and I, I say it partly tongue in cheek, but we have old fashioned values as well, like honesty, like loyalty. Um, and if somebody is, you know, if you want a good job doing, um, and you want to drive the Bentley, I'm saying, why don't you try it? Why don't you enjoy it? And why don't you let it pay you back before you pay me? And when you get these benefits, which by the way, can be a single payout, Hey, we've just saved you $172,000. Or, hey, we've just saved you $56,000 for the next 36 months. It's $56,000 per month for 36 months. It does actually drop to fifty-one dollars in month 32 because of XYZ. This, you, you pay us when you have been paid when it has got to the situation where oh he's given me another thousand out of his wallet i'll give him another 10. so good question so frequently required answers cost the massive one we've just been talking about it there is some more detail there that gives you the fixed fee the high Well, I think we lost you. Unlikely we yeah. are going to be successful in gain, garnering a 50% on a $10 million saving. It would be lovely, but it's pretty minimal. Um, we'd probably be looking there, um, obviously, at you know the 1%, the 1.5%, the 2%, etc. How uh, confidential is the service? It's... It, absolute there's no ifs ands buts whys we have something called a non-disclosure confidentiality agreement it's the first thing that gets signed 
um, and it goes into great lengths of expression of why we do it, what our clients want, and what they receive. Geographically, we can do this anywhere. And we have done it um, in multiple, um, excuse me, multiple countries. Um, so although we've all started looking at how do we do things digitally, remotely, um, how do we get into a situation where we are uh, building rapports, et cetera, all digitally, um, we've been doing it for a while. And a lot of it to, was to do with cost as it ran through our very own services. And, and you know, the results made it very clear that it was more beneficial for us to do that. And finally, knowledge and expertise. We're the pioneers in this. We've put blood, sweat and tears into this. Um, we started as a family business. We remain a family business. Um, now got three generations in the business, by the way. Um, training takes us an awful long time. Getting someone to the point where I would put them and they could sit down in front of um, whoever at any level um, takes approximately five years, of which two years um, is almost shattering. But, you know, that's the sort of um, efforts that have gone into this. Current slide, uh, and now this is just showing you examples of things that we have, like, um, you know, a, pressure, a preparation for a recumbent free shot. Recumbent is basically... Um, a laboratory method of bringing genes together in the um, DNA world. But with regards to the business world, we still need bridging and sealing of each of the cells because it's going to be handed off to another area. What we do here now throughout the process, this is showing you an identification. If you look, we've spotted the eye. Um, it's now magnified so that we can look at it as an individual element and we can then verify what's in there. We can isolate those specific areas, as we mentioned, through the free shot. And now we start getting transformation. And you see the transformation image. It's going through a series of events. Here's the free snap or the free shot, both are utilized in both of our areas um, of um, forensic cost or contractual obligation. And this goes into a lot of detail of what it does. Primarily, what it's enabling us to do is do that magical frozen in time, but we're still moving around. We're lifting things up. We're exploring. What did it touch? Why did that happen? Um, all of these things in the actual chain. Um, and you know, you know, you probably have seen things like strands of DNA. They can go on forever and ever and ever and ever. What we needed to look at is something that was much shorter. Um, and the RNA, which we, um, we discussed at the early aspects of us joining this call, is something that transferred um, very, very well within business forensics rather than just forensic science. Hopefully the slides are still with us and this is a quick show of multiplication of molecules of interest. If something is working well, identify it, replicate it, clone it. And this is just a, de uh, a depiction showing you of this is the cloning. These are the things why we want them repeating. This is the effects they have within the organization. How many can we have? How many can we sustain? Does it become um, reduced or diluted at a certain point? Is there a triggering point? Very busy slide. But if you look at the top left, it says one. It's basically number one. The next is number two and it moves in a circle all the way as a little treasure map. But it shows you the facts of how we get from the beginning. We're getting the information. It's unloaded. We then look at the verification.
Paul, that upper Midwest is getting you again. It will take this forward. As Paul, that upper see. Midwest got you again for about 10 seconds. Say one more time. He said that upper Midwest got you again for a few minutes. I mean, I mean about 10 seconds. So you cut out for a little bit on us. Where, where's the last thing you heard? Uh, maybe 10 seconds into the slide. Okay. So this is the treasure map. You follow it round from left down to the right and ba uh, back across to the left. And finally, you are at our wonderful um, cost forensics and contractual obligations model. This is where we go through each of the areas. It's to show you that this is very meticulous, very process driven. We are in this to win the race, not the lap. And we've got a, an individual there like a, a Hall of Fame basketball player that's bouncing your world along. He's now having a look and surveying the landscape. Um, and we're looking at accuracy there in preparation for a launch. And the launch is to whether it is either cost forensics or contractual obligations. It's now going to go into our um, process itself. You can see the DNA fingerprints all over it as it goes in. Hoping I'm not going to lose you for the next 10 seconds. And hopefully I don't. This, no, is, you're a with us. this is a closer look shows you the elements that it goes through. Um, all of these, again, are explained in great detail as a client. Nothing is a surprise. Nothing is too technical. Nothing goes over people's heads. Everything is described, what we're doing, what the goal is, why we're doing it, and what the times are involved of each stage. And obviously, the bottom stage is you're going to get an optimization model the results of everything. To give you a look at some of the areas that we're looking We know he's coming back. Four, three, two, Going one. Going up, if you will. Hey, Paul, we lost you again for about 10 seconds. And you're still gone. Most experts are already employed by you. They know hey, lots Paul, of we, Paul, we lost you a couple of times for, for, you know, a few seconds on the last two slides. One of my thoughts here, and Jeff, I hope you don't mind, uh, we're, we're at about 10 past seven. Uh, coming up against the timeline. And, uh, you know, as I said, I, I met Paul a couple of months ago, and, and one of my thought processes, here again, I'm a sales guy, was uh, why not? What do you got to lose? So, so one of my thoughts is, you know, some of the folks that are on the phone um, is there may be some interest in that half hour kind of, hey, let's, mm -hmm. let's take this model and let's put it on our particular environment see if there's anything there but i did want to pause paul just for a second to see if there may be some specific questions because we're gonna we're gonna quickly run out of time here to see if there might be some specific questions if not you can continue on your slides i think that's very fair does anyone have any questions right now we can ask any questions now and then paul could finish the rest of the slides and again, this is being recorded, Paul. So I um, want to make sure we, we cover what we can cover. Okay. Yes, and and, and um, obviously we're going to have interruptions with regards to some of the bandwidth constraints we've had. But during the last few um, minutes that we have right now, I think it is good timing. Um, I think, and you know, with regards to the slide that's currently saying it's time, it's going to work on the very similar scenario that we're going to go through on the contractual obligations as well. So, very similar process, exactly the same requirements 
with regards to does this make sense? It's the same sectors that we're dealing. Again, we utilize um, free shot and free snap. Um, you know, the main difference here is um, we're concentrating on the actions and the reactions that are done, the risk avoidance, the opportunities that exist. Um, you know, to answer a Bob question as a sales guy, there's nothing better to induce, uh, introduce a new product within your portfolio by being able to offer, um, you know, the old try it and buy it. Um, because this will enable you to have the fun. Oh, you're still there? I think we got to uh, send your internet provider to your house. Check those lines. I think you're um, right. I, it, it may be um, maybe all the interest, but I do apologize. And as we look through a similar situation, and at this point, I feel like I'm feature dumping, which I d desperately do not want to do. So I would say, um, Jeff, I have no problem in sharing the deck, and you can send it to all the participants. Um, or you can share me the contact details of everyone. I did manage to scribble down and take notes for most. Um, and then I will share that. And then, I, and then I would ask you any questions. My contact details will be on there. Uh, myself or uh, one of the team will certainly address all of the questions. But if you're looking for more revenue, if you're looking for better margins, and you're looking to get the optimal out of your cost, you have zero to lose, and I look forward to you scheduling a 30-minute briefing session. And I think with that, um, we're probably at the Q&A part as well, Jeff, for, for all of this evening's event. Sounds good. What I'll do is I'll stop the live streams, and then you guys can go into questions.